5 seconds to go. Start the finding of the prescribed authority that they did not get their names mutated independently would not be detrimental and cannot be an adverse circumstance to deny them their independent title over the land to the extent of their share. He further contends that even if subsequent settlement proceedings have been carried out under the UP Consolidation of Holdings Act 1953 and the co-tenants have failed to get their names recorded then such an omission cannot take away their rights which they are asserting before the state. The submission therefore ensured is that their independent right in the holding also did exist and there was no bar operating against them as concluded by the prescribed authority in terms of section 49 of the UP Consolidation Holdings Act 1953 in the sealing proceedings. The appellate authority according to him also misdirected itself by recording that the bar of section 49 of the UP Consolidation of Holdings Act will be attracted as the sons had failed to get their names recorded for a long time. He has further invited the attention of the court to the documents namely the statement of the beneficiary under the will and the attesting witness which was recorded before the prescribed authority in case number 208 of 1988 state versus Shiv Charan Singh under the sealing act. He submits that the said statement clearly proves the execution of the will and its attestation as such the will had been proved through cogent evidence in terms of section 68 of the Indian Evidence Act. He submits that the fact that the said statements were recorded before the prescribed authority has not been controverted before this court and in view of this the findings recorded by the authorities below that there was no evidence to prove the will led by the petitioner is perverse. Accordingly, he contends that the impugned orders deserve to be quest. The rejoinder to the counter affidavit has already been filed and is on record. Coming to the question of the execution of the will by Ishwari Devi, it is undisputed that the will was unregistered. According to the provisions of section 169 of the UPZA and LR Act 1950, no registration was required for a will bequeathing tenancy rights till the year 2004 when an amendment was brought about making such a will to be compulsorily registrable. The will is admittedly of the year 1986 and therefore merely because it was unregistered will not take away the effect of the instrument unless it is established that the same was not proved. The contention of the state therefore that the will was unregistered 
and the finding of the authority discarding it on this ground cannot be sustained so far as proving the will is concerned according to the records available before this court and which remains virtually uncontroverted indicates that the beneficiary under the will rajendra singh gave his statement indicating the circumstance of the execution of the will and one of the attesting witness moolchand had deposed before the prescribed authority that the will had been executed stop